G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, as you can see, I have been very busy on the bounty. I've been working on it over the New Year sort of holiday break. So there haven't been any videos because I have been so busy with all this running rigging here. And um, it's taken me a while to get it down to a simple method. And that's what I hope to share with you today because you notice the foremast, it's got no sails and it has no running rigging. The fixed rigging's in there, standing rigging, all the black stuff, but it's the brown rigging with all oh, lots and lots of pulleys. That's what we're going to put in here. So that's what we are going to do on today's video. Roll the music. <laughs> All right, so we want to rig a sail. <laughs> We're going to need a few things. We don't need all of these. No, don't don't get worried. But these are a lot of things that you can use, and I'll go through them. Now, some stuff you don't need, and we'll get rid of straight away, is do not use stretchy elastic cord. All right? Yes, it's lovely because it doesn't fur up, and I'll explain more about furries in a sec. And um, you're I'm sure you get nice tension on it, but then everything's going to be tense. Everything's going to pull. No. When you rig a ship, you just pull the lines till they are just right, and then you leave them. Nothing should be too tight, because it'll pull everything askew, and you don't want that. You want things firm, but you don't want, basically, this stretchiness. So, this sort of stretchy stuff that I bought, which someone suggested might be a good idea, crap, throw it away. Right, that's gone, we don't want that. Now, the next thing is, well, you might think, oh, you know, got some of grandma's cottons lying around. That might be quite good. Well, here's the problem. And the problem is called furries. Can you see all the furries? <laughs> Do you see them? And they are going to get covered in dust and they are going to annoy the heck out of you. So, you know, they may not be a good idea. The same with, you know, the little cotton reels, okay? So, again, can you see all the lumps and bumps? All right. Now, you might be happy with that. You might think, oh, that's all right. I'm not worried about that, Harry. Don't worry about that at all. Okay. But, um, again, I won't have that. So, all these little cotton reels, I'm going to get rid of those. Next, we move on to some of the commercial grade ones. And here's one from, um, this is um, Artesia. Hmm. Yes. Well... You might be able to fix that with some waxing, okay? So we do have some wax here. And these blocks of wax are not expensive. They're just really hard to get out of the bag, you little prick. Right, um, okay, so you take our cord. It has a fair bit of fur on it. And then what you do is you grab your wax and you just pull it through a couple of times. Okay. Right up and then no fur at all. Can you see the difference? See how the shadow, the shadow is what you look at, the shadow line is practically flat. Whereas if we move along, same chord, we move along there, oh dear, look at the shadow line there. Look how rough it is. Okay, so you could use these ones here which are commercially available, well, you know, from your hobby shop. And um, they're supposedly for rigging ships. They're okay. They're okay. Um, I'm not that fussed with them. Right, then you move to... Um, well, that's the same sort of one. Then you move to these ones, which have got the red spindles on. I think they're from Billings Boats. I'll, I'll have to check, and if they're not, I'll put a little soup on the screen there. Now these, and I've only got a light-coloured one here to show you. But let's have a look. Look at the shadow, because it doesn't what colour it is. No furries. And if that's waxed too, it'll be perfect. You also wax the lines because it makes it easier to push through the pulleys. So these are good and they're readily available. And I said I'll double check, I think they're called billing boats. Right? Billing boats, not billings boats, but it's a singular billing then boat. And um, those ones are quite good. And you can pick them up. Well in Australia you can find them on the frontline store, you can buy them basically from billing themselves. They're, they're really good and I like these little red spindles because in the top of these red spindles they've got a little thing here that lets you basically click the line into. So they're good. Right? And then your cord won't be 
floating around and running around the bloody hobby room and getting tangled up in all the bloody cat crap that's there. Okay, so that's good. Now, having said all that, the Holy Grail, which honestly, the only way to find it is to buy the kit, and that is MA, right? So I don't know if you can actually buy these. I don't know. I've only ever seen them in the kits. Okay, and this stuff is the Holy Grail for shipboard. So that's straight out of the box, no wax, no nothing. <gasps> Absolutely. Look at the shadows. Shadows will tell you. There are no furries with that at all. And not only that, you probably can't see it on camera, but it has this lovely corded appearance. Can you see the cordage in it? You might be able to see it how that it doesn't look like a piece of string it actually is wound and it looks like a ship's rope in scale so these are terrific and I've got a couple of these in a couple of different sizes here so they are fantastic but I've only got the dark ones so I'm kind of going to use a combination of these which I believe are the billing boats ones that'll give me my thinner ones and then if I need to do some thick lines they're still brown well, that, that's kind of tan. I'd use that. So I, I can, you know, you could use that for your standing rig, actually. So there's the first thing to consider is your string. Now, the kit, Revel supplies this cotton. So let's do our little test. Yeah, uh, it's a bit furry. It's probably the furriest. Okay, so can we fix that with some wax? Let's see. Okay, so just running it over the wax, pop it on our card, what have we got now? See what the wax does? Alright, so when that's waxed up, it's not bad. So if you've got a kit like the uh, the Bounty or any of the Rebel kits and you've got this cord on, or this, you know, this line, this cotton, it's usable, but you will need to get yourself some wax, you need to wax it. All right? And then it comes up fairly good. So we could use that, but we have to remember to wax it. The beauty thing is with the MA stuff, we can just proceed straight ahead. And even the billing stuff, right? Billing boats, I could proceed straight ahead. No need to wax. So, um, depends. Do you wax or you don't wax? Well, it just depends what your girlfriend wants. Okay, now, that's that part of it. What else have I got on my bench here? Okay, now, there are a ton of tools. Do you need them all? No, you don't. Okay, you don't. But there are some that you really should invest in if you're doing a lot of rigging. Or even if you're just rigging one boat. And the most important thing, especially doing running rigging, is this. Right? It's a, right, a beading needle. Okay? And this is wonderful. Let me show you. Here's one that I had before. And the reason you're going to love it, so we do this on camera is because it does this. See that? So because it parts like that, when you get your thread, right, you just basically drop your thread into that great big hole. It's so easy. Drop it, pull it to the end, and you are ready to rig. <laughs> easy as that. And it's nice and long, so you can really get in from the side of the boat and you can poke it in little holes, push it through, you can grab it at the other end. It's not super pointy, it's very dull at the end, so you're not going to stab yourself. It is fantastic. Okay? You still will need the usual sewing needle. Okay? You will need that. There are some things it's unavoidable, and I'll talk about that. Okay. You're going to need a sharp knife. All right, you're going to need a sharp knife cutting. What I also use is I make sure I sharpen up an old pair of clippers that are really sharp at the point. And this is handy for trimming at the end because at the end of when you finish rigging and everything's all set and glued in place there's often a little bit of excess and yes you can get in with your knife <laughs> but then often you get too vigorous <laughs> bing, and the whole thing comes off and you've cut too far or you've cut another line with these i even do this when i'm using um, easy line is these these are very sharp these ones is i simply get in fairly close and i just and the line, the waste, pops off. So that's one trick that I do there. Now, tweezers and pulling things. Okay, now, best thing you can have is a curved pair of tweezers because um, it's really sometimes good to sort of get in and around and grab something and pull it out and fiddle and put it through. And I use these a lot 
I could probably rig a whole ship with these. They're great. It's handy to have more of a square pair and not a pointy pair because sometimes you really want to get in and you want to really want to be able to drag something out. That's handy. Now then pulling devices. Well, these were dirt cheap. My friend the duck sent them to me and they're actually on eBay for like a few dollars and they're actually a dentist tool. They're fantastic. They're fine. They work really well. They're well made. They're good. You can reach in. You can grab a line that there's no way you get your fat fingers in because you've already started to build up a whole lot of rigging. Reach in and pull. Out it comes. You can buy a set, as I did. It was quite expensive, especially by the time I had it imported, of these um, these Micromark ones. Okay. Now, they're supposedly the duck's nuts, but I don't know if I've got a bad batch or what the story is, but these are cast as rough as buggery. They're um, flimsy as all hell. And look, they kind of do the job, but I seem to pay a lot of money for a whole lot of wiggly, weird little torture tools I'm never going to use. So I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Maybe someone's used these things. Uh, don't know. They were recommended to me on one of the um, shipbuilding sites. And I thought, okay, I'll go with it. But honestly, I never use that. I find it horrible to use. This is good. It's got some weight to it. I can reach in, grab what I want, and my tweezers do all the rest. So those are the tools you're going to need. And then you're going to need some glue. And I would use a PVA white wood glue. If you've seen the other videos where I rigged uh, the, the standing rigging and I did all the, um, the stays and the pulleys and the stays, right? Exactly the same. I use white glue. Why? Because it will set clear and you won't have any glue stains. So that's good. Uh, it also gives you time. If you've made a mistake, you can undo and you can pull it out. If you drip it and splodge it anywhere, it cleans off the cotton bud and water. It shouldn't damage the rest of your model. Assuming that you've sealed the whole rest of your model already, you've put a clear varnish on it. Any spills of this glue, you can find it. Even if you miss it and find it the next day, you find a little dollop somewhere, you can sometimes just about peel it off. As long as, again, you've got a good surface on where it's fallen. So this stuff really saves your life. And um, because of the fact that it allows you that little more fertile time and then that it dries clear so it can't be seen, it's terrific and it's removal. So yeah, white glue. I use cellies, but any PVA white wood glue is going to be what you need. Now some explanation of some of the names of things I'm going to talk about because I know quite often the videos people go, what the hell are you on about Harriet Denny? You must have swallowed a dictionary of nautical terms. Okay. The mast, of course, is the thing that goes up and down. The tree trunky thing. Everything goes on, right? Obvious. The yards are like the beams or the posts the sails hang from the yards okay so that horizontal thing there that's a yard in this diagram there are two of them the pulleys or the blocks they're the little wooden things that have little um, wheels inside of them that tie to masts and to yards and the ropes for the rigging go through those little uh, wheels inside there and you pull on the ropes and the pulleys allow forms of leverage and therefore that gives you greater strength because when you're basically doing levering you can increase your ability to move things through the mathematics of leverage okay so let's have a look we have got at the very top we have got lifts lifts go from the edge of the yards and they go up to the mast and it's sort of a triangle so it's a pair on either side and they are for lifting up a yard. The yard will start on its deck and it will get lifted all the way up the mast and there's its position. The lifts have halyards that go all the way down. So they're really all one rope, but we talk about the lift as the top part. The halyard is the rope that goes all the way down to the deck and gets tied off by the sailor. So the sailor can then untie that from its belay point. I often talk about belay points. That just means the point that it's tied. So they can pull on that or they can let that rope go. And therefore your lifts will raise or lower your yard. The next thing we're going to do in our rigging of the sail here is we are going to do the clue lines. Now clue lines are for raising and lowering sails. They also work hand in hand with sheets, but we'll talk more about them later. We'll just talk about clues for now, and I've made this rigging simple by only really worrying about the pulleys for the clues. Now the clue line runs first on one side of the yard, it's actually tied to the yard. It runs down to a pulley down on the yard below, 
and then comes up to a pulley back on its first yard where the sail is that's going to operate this clue and then it has a halyard that'll run all the way down to the deck. Now that leverage system of up, down, up, down, around, that gives you great strength for moving a huge big canvas sail. So that is your clue line. So that's basically it. We've got lifts at the top that also replicated the bottom, but I haven't drawn them on this diagram. You have your clue lines, which basically operate and pull the sail up and down on the yard. And then you've got halyards for each that run down to the deck. Okay, let me show how we attach all these things to the sail, ready for rigging. Here's some pulleys, and we're gonna start attaching them to the sail. And we do them now before they're added to the mast. And you may have noticed I did all the standing rigging with none of the yard arms on, none of the sails, because they get in the way. And I'm all about making sure you only put things on when you need them, keeping as much out of the way until you need to do it. And similarly right now, we've got some pulleys that we can put on the sail now while it's easy because tying these on once you've hoisted the sail is really hard so let's have a look we've got a double pulley for each side and these are three three millimeter long pulleys they're the smallest ones i could buy but i probably could have got down to two i found later on they might have been a bit more in scale but it's okay we get away with them for this ship these are double pulleys so these are single pulleys now i'm using the double pulleys as i'm cheating Technically, the arrangement that runs the sheets, the clue lines, and the lifts kind of all revolves around a couple of little pulleys that are very close together on the end or hang around the end of a yard. So this is tech. It, it's sort of right. It'll look good, and it's so much easier. I run a double pulley, and one of the holes in that pulley will be my lift. The other hole in that pulley will be my clue line, which is also combined with a sheet. So I literally get three lines out of one double pulley. That's nice. These two will also be the return loop of the clue line. Now, imagine this is down here as well, because there's another, right? There is another sail below this. So this pulley will also be down here with that sail. So this pulley here will be rigged up to that one and come down via a halyard to a belay point where it could be adjusted. And the same, there'll be another one of those there. Okay, these two just sit by themselves. You'll never, you won't use them again. They're just single pulleys. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more pulleys up on the mast, but we'll worry about those later on. Now, something I forgot to mention in the list of tools, which are usually lying around anywhere, you'll need toothpicks to apply your glue, and a handy device that I have. You can do without this, but it's a nice one. Is one of these clampy little tweezers. Now I have my four pulleys tied and glued, I can now move on to adding them to the sail. Now we'll do the double pulley because that's fairly easy, it just goes on the outside here. So that's relatively easy to do. I just need to make a loop. A simple loop. Okay. And that gets tied to my sail or to my yard. Remember it's going to go up. Don't tie it too tight because it's also going to need to sit at 45 degrees. When it's, when it's actually working, it's going to be like that. It's going to be at 45 degrees. So although you've got a loop on there and you think, oh, that's great, you want to do it really tight, just leave a little bit of slackness on it. Now, again, with the glue on my very glamorous looking uh, board, plenty of that because it dries off so quickly under the lights. And it's hot enough in Australia as it is without actually introducing lights into it. So a bit of white glue on there to encourage it to stay. Make sure you've got your string long on. Now check that that is not too tight. The beauty of the white glue is you can pull on it and you can loosen that a bit because that needs to sit at 45 degrees. So is it loose enough? Will it sit? Yes it will. That's fine. So we'll put another dollop of glue on there just hold it all in place. Alright, we've got the two double pulleys on the end here. 
and that's terrific. What I need to do now is attach these two pulleys, which are the glue lines, onto the yard here. Now they're going to work with the double pulleys that are going to be over down the bottom here. There's going to be another yard here, and there's double pulley here. So you actually have a line tied to the mast, runs down, runs up to this pulley, and then runs down by the halyard to the belay point on the deck so they can pull the sails up and down. Okay. Now what we need is we're going to need a point here at which to run the line through so we can tie that on. So I know from experience doing this that it's roughly, you can calculate it out from drawings, but I know it's two of these seam lines. So I count those out and this is where I'm going to use my sewing needle. One, two, and then I'm going to push in. So this is where our bedding needle is going to come in handy. Hopefully I've made the lengths long enough. It's very easy to poke this through the great big hole, right? And you don't need much, just a little bit. Let it go and then drag that down to the end. And now it makes life fairly easy. I can find that hole that we've already made. Okay. This will push through it. Drag it through. So easy. So with that across there, it's just a simple matter now of tying that off. It's always simple in theory, and then you try and do it on camera. Oh no, it's cooperating. So again, don't make it too tight. So I've got that on there. I've looped it on. Using my glue again, I just try and set that in place a bit. And I will give it a second knot so it doesn't worry loose. Sometimes I think it's easier just doing it with your fingers. Okay, now this one is not supposed to be tight at all. In fact, a little bit loose on this is perfect. It should sit a bit loose. The glue is really for the knot. We're not actually trying to hold it to the mast, oh, sorry, to the yard arm at all. We're just trying to get it in there. Now this here is a sheet, okay? And the expression comes on, you probably heard, six sheets to the wind, you know, all the rest of it. That's the thing. The sheet means you've pulled down all the sheets, all your sails are unfurled, and you're fully sheeted to the wind, okay? And the clues when you pull it all up. Now, I don't have a clue why well, it's called clue. Actually, I do. It's um, it's not a clue as in clue. It's the name of, a, of the ring. It's actually called a clue ring, all right? That, that's another story. A little confusing. But now, this is a sheet, right? Because up the top here, we have where the um, lifts and the clues are. Okay, they're going to run off that double pulley, which would also be down here. Remember, it's replicated. This should be sail below it and the yard below it are going to replicate this whole thing. So there will be a pulley here, which is basically designed to pull the sail up um, and pull the boom up. Okay, But this is designed to pull the sail down. This is the sheet line. So it's right at the tip and it's very hard to make it right at the tip. So here's what I do to get around that problem. And admittedly, by the time this is tied, one, this sheet, by the time it is actually tied off, is going to be about three millimeters long. Yeah, it's it's longer um, down below where there's actually no no yard underneath it, but um, never mind. At the pointy bit here, the apex of the sail, we go just inside our stitching, which is the safest point to put a hole because it's less likely to unravel all the fabric. Okay, these have also been caught, coated with a lot of um, white glue. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a look at my video on how to make sails because these sails are very resilient. They also bend into shape. They do all kinds of things because I've coated them in a lot of white glue. So I pick that point, which is inside my stitching, and using my little needle, I worry and push through a hole. Okay, so again, you just put your thread in that ginormous hole, let it go, drag to the end. That locks really tight. Um, it's amazing. That's all you've got to do. Okay, so now, oh, after all that, that goes through the hole. All right, and then we tie it off. And now we don't want to tie it tight. 
I'll explain that why that in a sec. Uh, again, to release this, drag it to the middle, pull it out, so easy. So what we want is we want that very loose, so we're not even going to try and tighten that. We're going to put glue on the apex. That's the only point we're going to put glue. Okay, We're not actually going to put glue in the hole. And then we're going to drag this, kicking and screaming, to its apex. Probably, this is probably a hard one to show because I'm covering things up a lot. Okay, so what I've done there is it's actually only looped right at the end. All right, the knot is not at the hole, the knot is right on the tip of the sail. Because that's actually, we're trying to make this look like what it would be is the actual sheeting line runs right down the side of the sail and then comes right off the tip. Okay, so that's what sheeting line does. But um, our sheeting line is a bit of a cheat, and it's there. We're also running it with two threads. That just makes it easy to tie off. So I'm going to double knot that now, but I'm going to make sure that only knots at the end. I don't want to pull so tight that it goes up towards that hole. Okay, so there it is. It's right at the end. And to seal the deal, some more of my glue. Check it over here. Is that sitting right to the end? Yes, both sides. Now, a point about sides. Uh, whenever you are putting these pulleys on your sails, do them on the inside. Now, we can tell it's the inside because I've left a little nub on there which attaches to the mast. All right, and that side. Because essentially, you won't see most of your running rigging on the front of the sail. It's all behind. Okay. It's all behind. It all either runs up to parts of the mast behind or it runs on the sail behind. It's all behind. Okay, So they're all setting nicely now. Now, one thing we need to do at this point is this clue line is going to basically set it comes up from the deck through there, down here, attaches to the other one of those here. And then it goes up and it actually attaches to point here. So while I'm doing all this prep work. I need a hole there for later. Uh, I could even tie the line on now, but that's really pushing things. So um, again, I measure one, two, one, two. That's about where I'm going to want that. So just make sure I've actually got a hole there, and I'll be able to remember where that is. Same over here, one, two, and I'll put that hole there. So I should be able to find those later when I actually go to rig. All right, so at this point, I can cut away a few things. I won't cut away these sheets because I need those to tie to the boom, which is going to be, you know, the yard that's going to be under here. Those sheets are going to come on and tie onto there. But all of these floppy things are sort of getting in my way. I don't need those now, so I can cut those away. And to do that, I'm going to use my little trusty little tool. So what I do is I put a bit of tension on the line. I take this until it rests down on the top of the knot and clip. There we go, took two goes. Now to do our truss, it's got to basically loop around the yard and then go around the mast and come back and usually it will then run down to the deck as a halyard. Okay? Unfortunately, well, this, this scale and this size model means I've got so many halyards, it's just a big mess and this is not one that I really want to worry about. I just want this on there functionally because I want to be able to hold my yard against the mast. Now the glue will do it to a point, but this just holds it in place, especially while I'm pulling and rigging, I could worry the glue loose. So what I need is, I will need a couple of holes, and these are the same holes I'm going to use for the, the truss, as well as uh, I'm going to use for the sling. And they are both either side of that mounting point. So that's basically the width of the mast there. So I need a hole here. And there's kind of holes there anyway. We're only really pushing a gap, which probably should exist all right, between the sail and the yard. But because so much has gone on here and so much has been glued, if you don't pull these holes now. Now I have tried doing this that I just simply um, leave the line loose and tie it up on the mast and do it correctly. But that was a lot of mucking around, don't you? That was a lot of messing around. It was too hard. So it's much easier to do this now 
and do it this way which is the cheats method and we all love the cheats method so let's see if I can open up my um, yeah, cooperates this time just wouldn't do it before I had to go off camera and swear it a bit so put you through there okay and this is just the cheats method for this one so we're going in our hole here we're going over and through okay so we've made a nice little loop I want to use about half of it so I want that to loop up not diagonally I want that to loop up straight okay and then we're going to go in the other side I may have this back to front but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so there should be a little hole there there it is because again this won't make holes this thing needs holes and through that goes that is it and that's given me two bits of cord here that then will wrap around the mast all right and then that loop there that's going to go around the mast that was hold that onto there now to secure that in place it's probably okay as it is but again we have glue we have toothpicks even though my glue is coagulating in this body heat um, I'll just encourage that to not move I'm also going to use my slightly thicker and brown MA because this sling is actually a bit of fix rigging because once it's in that's it it stays it doesn't move this one here will move because basically remember your sails are going to turn as they tack the sling though is just basically locked in place and um, it, it, it doesn't want to go anywhere it's holding together with the lifts it is holding that yard in place now I'm only going to really need two centimeters to do this but there's no way I can tie knots and do things with that so I'm going to basically just run about 10 or so centimeters long so I've got length to work with because the last thing I need is this to be too short and I also need to be able to tie knots so I need to see what I'm doing so working from the front of the sail now this one comes down and through the front of it on one side okay then you're going to need a loop you need to leave a big loop and then it comes through the other side okay but don't pull tight because you need this loop and then both these lines go up and through all right so when you pull it and you see that and that's how it works so it's very strong and that pulls evenly and nicely and that's going to go up and tie above there okay well look that is everything now to attach this to the mast but attaching sails to masts and then running the lines is a whole video in itself. And this one's, well, I think it's over half an hour now by the looks of things, all the footage I've shot. So that's where we are, okay? We have uh, lifts, the pulleys for our lifts are ready. There are also the pulleys for our clues. And the second pulleys for our clues here, they're in there for the, basically the clue line is going to go down, through that little hole down there, down there, through there. Okay, we've done that. We have our sheets. They're ready to go. Okay. And we also have our jack truss. Well, actually, that's the truss down there. And that is our jack sling. Okay. Or it's truss pendant. Truss pendant, jack sling. I think those are the correct terms. That's a sling. These are sort of little trusses that tie to the mast. That's quite a lot to do, isn't it? But really, getting them done now is so important. I have tried to do these while the um, yard is on the mast. It's a lot harder. It really is. Our sail is ready. I'm going to prepare the other two sails in pretty well exactly the same way. And the next video, we are going to raise and rig these sails.
to the model. All right, so look forward to the next one. That's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Thank you.